Alright guys, so in this video we are going to be looking at two specific types of factoring. Factoring out a greatest common factor or GCF and factor by grouping. So these are two cases with the factoring out of GCF will notice that is always the first thing you try. So here's the flow chart that you were given in class. Factoring out a GCF means before you do anything else, check to see is there something that all of the terms have in common. Once you do that, then you're going to check the number of terms. So this is what we're focusing on today is our four terms factor by grouping. So factoring out a GCF is what I check first. I may be done or I then may have to continue down with factor by grouping or one of the other methods we'll learn at a later date. So the first example, they just say factor. So the first thing I'm going to check is a GCF. So I'm looking for is there something that negative 6x, negative 2xy cubed, and negative 6x cubed have in common. So first focus on the signs and the numbers. So negative 6, negative 2, negative 6. Well first off they all have a negative in common, so I can take that out, and they all have a 2 in common. They have a 6 divides 2, 2 divides 2, and 6 obviously divides 2 again. So I'm going to take out a 2. Now I'm checking to see if there's something else they have in common, so now I'm moving to the letters. So x, xy cubed, x cubed. So this one has 1x, one 1x, one and 3y's, three 3x's. Three so the greatest thing that they all have in common is 1x, because this one has an x, an x, and an x. So I'm going to take out an x. Now, to find what's left inside, I'm factoring out, so I'm reverse distributing, meaning I'm dividing. So negative 6x, I took out a negative 2x, so I'm left with a 3, positive 3. Negative 2xy cubed, I took out the negative 2, I took out the x, so I'm left with a y cubed. And then the last one, negative 6x cubed, I took out negative 2, which is going to leave me with 3, and I had three x's, I took one out, so I'm left with three x squared. So that is your final answer. So the second one, I have three x y cubed plus 12 x cubed y. So piece by piece. Numbers first. I have a three and a 12. So the biggest thing that three and 12 have in common is three. So I'm gonna take out a three. Now the next one, I have x, and x cubed. Well, the biggest thing that they both have is an x. And then y cubed and y, the biggest thing they have in common is a y. And so now I'm ready to write the stuff inside. So 3xy cubed, I took out 3x and y, so I'm just left with 2y's. 12x cubed y, I took out 3, so I'm left with 4 x squared and then I took the y out and I took one of the other x's out. So there, that is your answer. Okay, so here's just a quick overview of factor by grouping. You're going to see those five steps on the screen. I would take a moment to pause the video and get those written down before you continue. A thing to note is that factor by grouping only happens when you have four terms. So as soon as you see four terms, you know that I have to do factor by grouping. Also take note down here in the corner, with this last step, order does not matter. So if you have that order reversed, the answer is still right. All right, so here's my next example, example two. Factor 3y squared minus 18 plus y squared b plus 3b. So, I first am checking a GCF, because that's always what I do first, no matter what. 3y squared, negative 18, well, those have something in common. But then I have y squared b. So, already I was thinking, oh, I may be able to factor out a 3. Well, now I can't because this term doesn't have a 3 out front, or something that divides 3. So, I don't have a greatest common factor, so I skip that. I have 1, 2, 3, four terms, so that tells me automatically that I'm going to do grouping. Because I had four terms, I have to go straight to factor by grouping. I don't have any other method to factor those. So I group up the first two, group up the second two. Now I find the GCF of the first two and pull it out. 
So the GCF of 3y squared and negative 18 is 3. And then I'm left with y squared minus 6. Carry down my sign in the middle. That's step 3. Step 4 says, all right, we'll do the same thing, but now the second pair. y squared b and 3b. Well, I have a b in common, so I factor it out. B, y squared b, take out a b, leaves me with a y squared. 3b, take out a b, leaves me with a 3. So now notice these two things are not the same. So with factor by grouping, something that has to happen, you have to have the same thing in the parentheses in order to write down the repeat and the leftover. So because those things mat don't match, this is not factorable by grouping. Now, as you get higher in math, there's other methods to factor, but for this, that's as far as I can go, so it's not factorable by grouping. All right, so here's my last example. 20b cubed plus 35b squared minus 4b minus 7. So I check a GCF. So when I do a quick look through, they don't all four have anything in common. Now, two of them do, but all four of them do not have something in common. So I move on to checking the number of terms. So I have 1, 2, 3, four terms. So again, I'm going to use factor by grouping. So I group up the first two, group up the second two. Notice I did not put the parentheses containing that middle sign. I stuck it behind the sign. So with this first set, I find what do they have in common? Well, 20 and 35 have a 5 in common, and then b cubed and b squared have b squared in common. So then 20b cubed, take out 5b squared, I'm left with 4b. 35b squared, take out 5, I'm left with 7. Carry down my sign. As soon as that middle sign is negative, I know that I have to now not take out a number, but take out a negative number in addition to whatever I was going to take out. And that's because I have to change the sign of everything in the back. So negative 4b and negative 7 have a negative in common, and that's it. So it's just a negative 1. Now what that negative means is change the sign. So negative 4b, take out a negative, is positive 4b. Negative 7, take out a negative, is positive 7. Now you'll notice that the parentheses are being repeated, so I write down my repeat. And then once that repeat's gone, I write down what's left over, this 5b squared minus 1. Now, of course, always check to make sure it doesn't factor any more, but that is, that's done because neither one of those then are some of my other special cases of factoring.